let's revisit the cliffhanger of part one of Pyramids of Mars, probably the greatest Doctor Who cliffhanger of all time. Now this cliffhanger runs for about a minute and 30 seconds and I'm going to pause it along the way and delve into what makes this such a killer cliff. So if you haven't seen it then maybe pause this video, watch episode one of Pyramids of Mars which you should have already done and by the way this is the new version, the Tales of the TARDIS version as you can probably see here. Here we go. <laughs> First of all, this organ playing there is completely deranged, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get a better piece of music for a scary Doctor Who cliffhanger and part of me kind of wishes that the music had carried on but as we'll see in a minute it stops. Now look at this sarcophagus that's quite a scary looking sarcophagus and it's about to transform and we're about to see the new special effect that has been applied to it. <laughs> Let's have a word for these mummies, aka servo robots. They look just so fantastic, don't they? And I love the way that their arms are up as in worship. I don't know why robots would actually do that, but then again, maybe Sutek would have programmed them to do that because, you know, he's quite an egotistical individual. And this guy in the background is, of course, Namin. <laughs> This is quite a subtle thing that I've only just consciously noted. These servo robots, these mummies, we've been scared by them all episode, but they are taking a step back as whatever is coming through this vortex approaches. So that suggests, however we feel about these mummies, they're about to be one-upped by what is approaching. <laughs> And that is so scary. Fancy new special effects or not, and I think this is very nice. The main thing here is basically something wicked this way comes. And I've always found it a really powerful effect. The something in the distance that just seems completely ominous, but also inexorable. It's just it will not stop and it's coming very slowly towards you. That's almost more scary, the relentlessness of that, than something that pops up right in front of you. It's a different effect. And look at this, uh, this character here. Oh, hi. Oh, powerful. Most local lord. <laughs> First of all, Namin, I wouldn't look too pleased if I were you. And secondly, the organ is still playing by itself. I, I hope you know. Uh, <laughs> but that's fine because I want the, the music to continue. It's such crazy kind of gothic overload music. You know, it just sounds like we're in a huge cathedral. Oh, the servant will continue. I love the slow approach, you know, it is really just a gradual approach as Sutek's servant, as, as we'll find out. He is arrived. Now, this is a nice moment, This because, you know, like kids, we kind of measure our reaction to the doctor's reaction. And the doctor does not look happy about this at all. In fact, he looks a bit spooked. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sarah. The Doctor looks properly furious there, doesn't he? But again, this is also reinforcing that something serious is happening here because the Doctor is telling her to get back in no uncertain terms. Master, at last you are here. This guy, this thing, whatever Sutek Servant is, and I love that we have no idea, even by the end, who Sutek Servant actually is. Is it a thought projection of Sutek? What is it? But um, the main thing here, really, at the moment, is that he seems to be on fire. He's so evil that he's on fire and smoke is coming from him and he doesn't even flinch. He loves it. He is fire, basically. I, Ibrahim, Namin, and all my forebears have served you faithfully through the thousands of... Kudos to whoever played Sutek's servant. And by the way, get down in comments and tell me if you happen to know who played Sutek's servant. Has this question been answered over the years? Because it's often interested me. Obviously, this guy's about to speak with the voice of Gabriel Wolf. But was this Gabriel Wolf? And if so, props, mad props to Gabriel Wolf because he managed to navigate three steps without clearly being able to see. ...of years that you have slept. We have guarded the secret of your tomb. And let's hear it for whoever came up with this helmet because that thing is just brilliant. It kind of mirrors the look of the servo robots, doesn't it? The mummies with the two sort of panels. But it looks like two, either two giant eyes or just blank, black, nothing, depending on how you look at it. The hands like this as well is just, there's something really creepy about that. It's kind of suggesting that he is a servant, but the fact that he seems to be on fire. I mean, I don't know whether he's supposed to be on fire or whether that's supposed to be coming out of the time vortex. Who knows? It's just a great effect. Stand. The first sound of Gabriel Wolf. I mean, what is that? 
What is that voice? That sepulchral voice. That is pure evil, isn't it? Look upon thy face. Great one. You'll note, by the way, that Namin does not stand, even though he's been asked to, and uh, he's about to regret that. Although if he had stood, I think the result would have been the same. Lord Sutek, I dare not. Look. Look, the slow tilting of the head down and the slow rising of Namin's head. I think that's a great reaction because this actor, he could have really gone overboard with the fear, but he is kind of really projecting that he's terrified and yet he's trying to be brave. You almost feel bad for Namine, who has been the villain for the whole episode. I mean, when you're watching this story for the first time, you would easily assume that Namin would be the villain, or at least around, for the entire run of four episodes. Uh, but no. Is this the face of Sutek? Master, spare me. Spare me. I am a true servant of the great Sutek. I am the servant of Sutek. He needs no other. Wow. Has the word other ever been said in such a cool and scary, creepy way before? I don't think so. Other. I can't even do it. I can't even. How do you do that? Other. That, that sort of, it, it just goes down like an octave at the, in the final syllable, doesn't it? Other. It goes down to hell. And look, the hands are unfurling. I've just realised as well that we are supposed to assume that this, this entity is kind of fire personified because look what's about to happen to poor old Namine. <laughs> Great reactions here. It kind of cements that this is really uh, serious stuff shout out against this actor because I think his screams sound genuinely agonized. I think those are the kind of screams that these days, perhaps rightly, you know, when you've got like five-year-olds like mine watching, those are the kind of screams that probably would have been toned down for like a second or third take because <laughs> they sound like he's in serious pain. Die. <laughs> die. I think he says die. He does say die right because I think this is my one criticism and it's purely a technical criticism of this amazing cliffhanger is that the word die is not clear enough. Does he say die? I think he does, right? I bring Sutek's gift of death to all humans. Oh, I mean, I bring Sutek's gift of death to all humanity. This is a line that we've also heard again since, shall we say? I love that Namin is still alive and he's kind of whimpering while Sutek's servant delivers that line. And then after the amazing line, I bring Sutek's gift of death to all humanity, he screams again and his final death throw. He's just, he's suffering such a terrible death. He's being cooked, incinerated from the inside, like, like a microwave meal, before microwaves were even invented. So that's pretty amazing. Namin was supposed to be the bad guy, but now he's been seriously one-upped. He's in over his head. And whatever this thing that's arrived is, it has plans of death for all humanity. So the stakes have just gone through the roof. What a cliffhanger. I'd love for you to get down in comments and tell me your feelings on this cliffhanger. Which elements do you love about this that I've missed. Let's talk about it. Also on this screen you'll see my honest reaction to the recent Doctor Who finale, Empire of Death, and a couple of other things that may interest you, including my community for happy Doctor Who fans who just want to hang out and geek out without getting trolled. Thanks for watching and never forget who you are.